Hello, 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 hello. It's that day. What day is it? Of course, it's Tuesday. But what does that mean? Sounds like it might mean. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. Could it be? Could it be? It might be. What are you talking about? Trivia Tuesday. Okay, maybe that wasn't so good. Uh, hello, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland. Vinny is cleaning himself. Hmm, nice. The day is the Tuesday, the 26th of November, 2024. And uh, I'm tired. It's half past eight and I'm ready for bed already. This is number 1,242 of the Let Me Boy to Sleep series. That's quite a lot, isn't it? 1,242. Blimey. So, I don't know what the latest is. What's the latest? Okay, I've got a few things I can tell you. One of the things is I spoke to my... The Open University tutor. I got a reply back. I'll, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. Let me read it to you. Oh yeah, only listen if you can safely close your eyes. My YouTube channel is available, and I upload a ten-hour version of each recording. It's a black. It's a black screen or dark screen after the first ten seconds. Me 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 me. What else? I have. Uh, I'll stop your in a minute. Don't worry. I have a Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group, and that is it. I think. So. A couple of things have been going on. I've been trying to sort out my finances and stuff. So that seems to be coming along. The other thing that I've had an issue with. That I just It's my own thing. But it is the Open University degree course. I'm not. Okay. I'm a little bit. I've been getting behind with the study. But it's been, it wasn't just that, it was I just couldn't mo mo motivate myself to do the, the first assignment. And although I, I thought I'd sent the assignment in, I hadn't, because I, I put it through the wrong portal or something, I, I really don't know. And so what I did is, I'm just trying to find the email. I sent an email to my tutor. Blimey. Okay, here we go. I sent it on Friday, I think. Yeah, Friday. Because the, the first assignment was due on Thursday. So I sent an email. I was just honest. Uh, I'll read it out to you. Uh, so, dear... Mrs. Tutor, that's not her name. Uh, I've messed up, I've struggled a lot to do this TMA1 due to mental health issues and a lack of confidence and motivation. I did, however, send in a practice one just to see if I at least is in the correct format. It was sent on the 20th of November, I think. So I'm a little bit confused whether I did that or it's a weird one. I just don't know how to use the system. And so, I feel like I'm lying, but I'm not. Anyway, I'm not sure what to do next, as I have missed the deadline and not asked for an extension. 
Oh yeah, well, I, I thought I was sending it to a practice thing, and then I got a, a thing saying that they'd received it and it and it was done. So I just thought, oh no, I sent it in, but it's wrong. It wasn't completely full. It was just a test one. So I, I thought, well, oh. and then I went back on there and it didn't look like they'd received it. Confusing. I'm very confused. Just generally. So as well as experience, a lot of anxiety due to whatever. Um, also been going last week processing um, debt relief stuff. My brain's a bit frazzled. Uh, I'm unsure to my next move. Do I need to cancel a course or will I get removed? So I thought I'd give a bit of information, but I didn't want to, you know, I didn't just want to be casual, like, well, I didn't send it in, meh, meh. I'd give a, at least a, a reason. Not an excuse, but a reason, kind of. Anyway, I appreciate your time and apologise for gone too much detail about my mental health and penal issues. Especially as, <laughs> I'm joking, especially as it may just seem like I'm trying to make excuses and then in brackets I put maybe I am. Perhaps I shouldn't have put that. I find the material of the course interesting and I've read the chapters of the course book numerous times, which is true, which is true. Um, as well as using outside sources to expand my understanding of this material, which is also true. I find the more different angles I approach a subject, the likelihood that the knowledge will somehow stick in my brain um, and then be accessible to me in future when needed, such as in completing the TMA1, which is the tutor-marked assignment. Uh, it's a bit like throwing poo at a wall. Eventually something will stick. Again, perhaps I shouldn't have put that. I have gone online to try and figure out how I am able to write in some kind of academic manner, but keep seeming to fall short of my goal. I've attempted to put together a formulaic strategy of paragraphs that then that then can be changed to include all the relevant information that's being asked of me to explain my understanding uh, of the coursework. Anyway. Please, can you advise me on my next step as I've run out of ideas and I'm not even certain that there are any options left for me with the Open University. Thanks for your patience in reading this. All the best. Stephen Seagal. And I just thought, um, now I'm going to treat myself to a poo. Again, I'm not sure how professional that was. When it, I sent that on Friday. No, I sent that on Saturday. Blimey, why did I send it on Saturday? It's a Saturday. Yeah. In the afternoon at one fifty two PM I didn't expect to hear anything clearly because it's a weekend um but I just didn't expect to get a response until Monday, which I didn't. I was hoping I'd get one by Monday so I could then figure out what to do next. Hi Jason. This is a response. Hi Jason. I'm sorry to hear you're having some difficulties. However, I do appreciate you sharing these with me. Do not worry. All information written here is confidential. And by the way, I would never read anything out that someone sent me that was confidential to them, if that makes sense. Just let you know that. Uh, sorry to hear you missed a deadline. <laughs> so I'm just laughing at what might come next out of my head. Sorry to hear you missed a deadline and did not ask for an extension. Indeed, extensions do not work posthumously or respectively, retrospectively. So my recommendation here would be to contact the student support team as soon as possible. They will help you outline what options you have right now. So please contact them and explain your situation. Let me know what they tell you. Okay, so that's, that's what I've done. And then she's just put um, lots, lots of love. Susie Q, uh, 14 Bellevard Road, Southampton, SM492Q, uh, telephone number 0795-432-7474-12-69-3457-4948-7123-1112. So, that last bit's obviously just made up. Uh -huh. 
So that was at 11.39 p.m. a.m. in the morning on a Monday. So I replied, uh, Hi, thank you for getting back to me. Thanks, Susie Q, for getting back to me. I took your advice and contacted student support. I spoke to um, um, Bobby, Mc, Bobby McFadden and... Uh, he explained that I can continue on to TMA2 and as long as I pass the overall module I will be fine so that's what I shall do thank you thanks again and uh, Susie Q replies great to hear this please focus on TMA02 okay if you need any help, please shout. Please do engage in the module material and all the support, etc. Um, and please stop reading out my emails to your podcast listeners and especially my address. Please just stop that. Um, Susie Q, 41 Melbourne Avenue, Portsmouth, PM5761, telephone number. I one seven three nine three two four five three seven nine eight two eight nine five six two one three five four. So it kind of went together quite well. So what I need to do is send, just basically do the coursework. The next for the next one, the next um, part. Let's have a look. If I go back, right? Is it going to log me out? Nope. So I've got all weeks. So the second that block, the first block, like block one, is now completed. Block two started on the twenty third, which is what three days. Two, twenty three, twenty four. 4, 25, 26. So it's less than 4 days ago. Less than 10 days ago. More than 1 day ago. Block 2. So on this one we're going to be talking about the self, diverse families, young people's mental health and well-being, education and learning. Uh, yeah, that's the ones. In the first block it was... The self, diverse families, young people... No, blimey. Just read that. The first module was What is Childhood and Youth Studies? The Psychology of Childhood and Youth. Embodied Childhood. I struggled with that. The concept of that. And it's weird. I've been... Not studying psychology for years. I've just been interested. I've read books and stuff. I might have studied psychology to a degree well not to a degree but in a way um, regarding when I did my first degree my counselling degree so psychology was part of that however I've never heard of the term embodied like embodied learning embodied childhood I didn't understand it I can't it's, so it took me it's taken me a while to kind of get my head around it. I think I have now, but it involved reading, a, listening to an audio book all about it. I think two, in fact. And also looking on YouTube and listening to a couple of lectures and stuff like that. Just to, I just found it difficult to... The concept just... I don't know why. I don't know why. Anyway, so... I think this next, the next one, I think it's going to be not easy, but more kind of something that I know a little bit about, like the self, diverse families, young people's mental mental health and well-being, education and learning. So, you know, I, I think that it's a little bit more perhaps interesting than the. I don't know. Anyway, the the next 
S assignment cut off date is the 30th of January 2025 so I've got what is it yeah two months two months take away a day so I'm going to get on this and what I'll do is the way it works is the the first assignment is only 10% of the entire year or the entire course of this this course which means that I as long as I get and I have to get a score of 40% overall so as long as I get a score 40% with all the other over 40% of all the other uh, assignments I'll be fine and then this course doesn't even it's not even included in the overall mark of the degree have to do the course but it's not included in the overall mark of the final mark of the degree in six years time hey that's exciting isn't it <laughs> why are you telling us this i don't know i'm just keeping you updated that's all that's all right so that that's where i'm i am with this stuff just um hmm. I, it's weird I, I just, I, what what i need to do what i need to do try and figure out my way of learning a way that because if it's not fun i don't want to do it and i'm doing this for fun i'm not doing it to further my career what career altogether now what career exactly i don't have a career so i'm not doing it to further my my status in life or to improve my finances or anything like that this is purely because i, I think it's important to, to have an active mind it's important to keep learning uh i think for everyone it's not you know and there's studies that show that that it's really important to keep learning new things to keep your mind be not busy it's not about being busy because it's easy to be busy without learning anything you know don't need don't need education to keep busy i can watch box sets all day long i could be playing games which i don't but i could I could be a gamer, baby. A gamer. I'm never any good with games. The only the only two games I ever liked, really, apart from the really early ones, like I quite like Pac-Man, but it just used to annoy me a little bit. Um, Space Invaders. I like Space Invaders, but it used to annoy me a little bit. I didn't like it when they kept... They just kept coming down. Don't know. You know when you, you shoot them and they just keep coming down further and further and further and crashing on you? No, I didn't like that. I didn't... It seemed unnecessary. A little bit rude, really. And um, what else is there? I, I, I quite... In the early days, because you know, I don't know how many people could remember this, the first video games were basically was it tennis and you had a little console with a, a twirly knob and so you'd, you'd t you hold the knob and you just turn it and you had a little line either side of the screen and a ball or a dot would go between and you just basically have to knock it over to each other and try and get it into the, I suppose, into the goal, or I think they called it tennis. I can't remember. No, not into goal. You had to. They had to basically. Yeah, you had to get it in, past the the thing. And I think the further you got in the game, the longer the line would be. 
I think, the further you got, and the f- yeah, something like that. And every time you lost a point, that the line would go smaller, so you'd have less less room to hit the ball back. And it was literally just two lines and one dot, and boop, 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 like that. It was just, it was, it was good. For its time, I mean, we're talking probably early 80s, maybe maybe late 70s. But I quite like that. I think partly because it's something that I could kind of compete with, with my brothers. Because I couldn't compete with them physically, because I was a lot older than me. And when it came to physical sports, even things like playing pool or snooker or tennis table tennis football anything that was kind of physical I just didn't stand a chance against them because they just were bigger and stronger than I was but with this computer game it was kind of even ish but I still lost (laughs) I don't feel I ever won they were very competitive, but I think that's normal. You got brothers or sisters, siblings. It's to be competitive with each other. So yeah, that's going back a while. So I was okay with that. I did have, I did have some, a couple of computer games, because there it, it was a phase, a phrase, a phase where you could buy handheld computer games and they weren't little they were quite bulky things but that suited me I like holding big things because you know that doing stuff on a do you remember what was those little is it Atari no Nintendo you know those tiny little lin, Nintendo handheld things tiny little things like no I want something that I can actually see I want something that comes in a box that it's a big box, so when it's a Christmas or a birthday present, I can get excited. It's hard to get excited over a small box. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's what I was like. I had a couple of, a couple of games, computer games. I can't remember what they were. I think they were kind of in the same line as like the uh, what did I say the the not Star Trek. He's distracted me with his noise. He's biting on a bone now, and he's distracted me. So I yeah. Anyway, I had a couple of games, but the only two games I really liked outside of the games that I had myself. was never really been a big game fan not even as a kid but when I was fourteen probably about fourteen there was a video game called Tron at the arcade and I used to play that and always lost I mean, obviously, otherwise I'd still be playing it, I suppose. I'm trying to put Tron into Google, and it keeps like, trying to get me to put something else in. Tron. 1982. Tron the game. Really? Maybe it, I didn't realise it was that early. Arcade game. Release. The arcade game, 1982. Okay, so it wouldn't have been when I was 14. It would have been when I was 12, 13. It, I wouldn't have been on it straight away. I was always behind the trend, as it were. But I did used to play Tron, and... I actually enjoyed it, but unfortunately you had to pay... So the idea of having to keep putting in 10 pence or 20 pence or 50 pence, whatever it was. Although I don't know if 20 pences existed back then. I 
don't know. When did 20 pence come into circulation? June 2009? No. June 1982. It was the first undated. What? Ah. Oh. No, this is about an accident. It was an unusual, accidental, dateless version of the 20 pence piece. And it was reported to be in circulation in June 2009, which would be the first undated British coin to enter circulation in more than 300 years. So, when I was a kid, growing up, we had one pence pieces. We had two pence pieces. And they were made of copper. They were brown and rusty. Well, maybe not rusty, but they were brown. Then we had five pence pieces, which were silver. Little. Then we had ten pence pieces. Fifty pence pieces. And that was all the coins there was. And we had one pound notes. We had five pound notes. Ten pound notes. And I'll be completely honest with you, I don't know above that. I don't know when 20 pound notes came in. Because I don't, I never had that, you know, we're talking the early 80s. I never had 20 pound. So, I wonder when did 20 pound, when did a 20 pound note come into circulation that's interesting the 20 pound note came into circulation and I'm just wondering whether or not I would uh, remember it 20 pound notes were introduced by the Bank of England for the first time in 1725 <laughs> ok fair enough they were around I just don't remember I wasn't, you know, that's a long time ago what I do know is there was no one pound coin when I was little so the first one pound coin was introduced the, the one pound coin replaced the Bank of England's one pound note which ceased to be issued at the end of 1984 and it was removed from circulation on the 11th of March 1988 when was the one pound coin introduced? That's the thing, because it would have been introduced long before the pound note was got rid of. How much? It sounds like my trivia is going to be money today for some reason. A one pound coin that was introduced on April 21st, 1983 for the Queen's birthday with a mintage of 4430535510. Oh, I don't know what that was all about. What am I saying? For coin collectors and others looking for one to buy or sell, the average sale value is £1.80, according to eBay. <laughs> when was the first £1 coin introduced? It was... Re it was... Pre the original pound coin... Replaced. I know it replaced, but when was it first? Because I don't just like say, everyone, here's a pound coin, now stop no, stop with your notes, here's now the pound coins. No. They, they would have started releasing them before they got rid of the pound notes. It's not telling me. It will not tell me. I was at school anyway. I remember that. Because we used to play... I say we. Um, the kids at school used to play coin against the wall. So you chuck a coin against the wall and whoever got closest to the wall won the other person's coin. If there was two people doing it. If there was five people doing it, whoever got closest to the wall would win or everyone else's money. It's, it, was a, it was a trend for a while. And I used to lend people money to, because you know people would get like, so excited and they'd lost their money maybe. So I'd lend money to people. 
and he just made a very strange noise. Unfortunately, I was really bad at it. I was, I was not very good at collecting the money back. So I stopped. You may say, how could you lend money? Well, I had about three jobs at the time. In the early 80s, I had... I, what did I have? I feel like at one point, I had a morning paper round, an evening paper round, a monthly de leaflet delivery thing, which I'd do at the weekends, and also... Uh, yeah, and that was it. So I, so I had like three jobs. Oh no, I also did the town crier. So I had like four, and that was uh, once every two weeks, I think. So yeah, I had. It wasn't a lot of money coming in, but it was still, you know, cool. So the one pound coin came in, and then the two pound coin came in. We never had a two pound note, as far as I'm aware. The two pound, when did the two pound coin come in? I'm gonna guess, before I put it in there, I'm gonna guess 90s. No, no, 1986. Wow. I had a friend who used to collect two pound coins well, as far as a collection thing goes, it's not too bad, is it? I mean, collecting money, it's not not the worst hobby. And it's always going to go up in value, isn't it? Yeah, get it? You know, because the more you add, the more it's going to be worth. Unless, of course, you, yeah, actually you won't, because if you just sit on money, it goes down in value, doesn't it? The history of the two-pound core and the raw mint, I know all about going down when it comes to money. I actually used to like the idea of being a a financier, financier, so like someone that could do money, knew how to work with money and shares and stuff like that. I used to buy the Financial Times when I was eighteen. However, I didn't have a clue what I was reading. I just liked the idea of walking around with this pink newspaper. Hmm. <laughs> It's true, I did. I'd walk around, showing it off, opening it up in public. Didn't know what I was, you know. I think at one point someone said, look, excuse me, mate, your paper's upside down. I didn't know. I, could, I didn't know what I was reading. 1986. See, this is supposed to be... Uh, Trivia Tuesday. Okay, let's... And he's distracting me again. I'm sorry, let me just step on you. Good boy, good boy. So let's have a look. Um, so get some trivia on... UK coins. So I'm going to ask ChatGBT, find... I'm just going to, about money, let's have a look, oh this is interesting, kind of, because it actually does relate to something I know about, which is rare, coin flip predictability, a study that a coin toss isn't truly 50-50, <gasps> dun, 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 so, you know, when people say, oh, 50 50, you do, you know, heads, tails. A flipped coin is more likely to land on the side it started on about 51% of the time. So, next time you flip for pizza toppings, take a second look at the starting side. It's more likely to land on the side it started on. What did I mean by it started on? The one, the side that's facing up or the side that's facing down? Oh, I guess the face, yeah, facing up. It's, yeah, <laughs> okay. Do you know, I'm going back a little while, but does anyone remember 
the episode of The Happy Days when the Fonzie was flipping coins off of his elbow into his hand? It's a, it's a random, random question. And you have to be pretty old to remember that. For some reason, I remember it. Now, I probably don't remember it from the original because it's possibly repeats that I watched. Although I, I didn't, I did watch it when it was originally on as well. But there was one episode where the Fonzie was, yeah, he was just doing that. And it, I think it, either he was doing it because it was a new, a new kind of thing that people were doing, or him doing it caused a trend. Should I find out? Did Fonzie? Did Fonzie coin flipping cause a trend? Scientist. Oh, did Fonzie? Why would it coin tossing? Wow, that's weird. Did the foin Fonzie coin 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 tossing? From elbow cause a trend. Number of quarters on Fonzie's elbow. <gasps> Whoa. And number of quarters. Oh, Henry Winkler explains the origins of the Fonzie's famous uh oh. Oh, cat favors catchphrases. That's not one of them. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. I'm banging a microphone. I'm sorry about that, everyone. It's, I've got a, a different setup now. I'm not sitting in a chair, the comfy chair anymore, because it's too hard to do podcasts when I'm comfortable. I'm not uncomfortable, but I'm sitting at the desk. So I've now got the microphone stretching from one desk to the other because. Otherwise, it's a bit restrictive because my throat gets a bit like, well, no, and I talk like this. How many quarters did Fonzie catch from his elbow? I can't remember the whole episode, but it had to do with a competition at Owls. Okay, just saw this episode last night, and it was 40 coins, Angie. Fonzie's cousin. Oh, okay, Angie. All right, so Angie Fonzie's cousin, who caught all of them for a new record. Okay. So I don't remember that. I mean, it might have been a trend. It's a long time ago. Anyway, get this, right? So, you know, you, you balance the coins on your elbow and then you catch it with the same hand. I was good friends with the record holder for that. His name is Dean Gould. You can Google him if you want to find out about him. Okay, so this is okay. There's a there's an article about him in the local newspaper, not around here, but he's this is from the twenty second of August, two thousand twenty one. So let's have a look. Meet Dean Gould, who has won 54 world records, including name over, naming over 700 Titanic survivors. <laughs> oh my goodness. How is that even a record? This is ridiculous. I have to register to read the article about my friend. It's ridiculous. It's really sad. No, he won't let me read it. So let's have another one. He used to call himself Dexterous Dad. He could literally move, he had really long fingers, big hands, and he could bend his fingers back, backwards. You know, like you can, if you if you face your your palm flat, like facing towards the ceiling, this is 
providing you're sitting on a chair and you're not standing on your head. So face it towards the ceiling. And you know when you just move your fingers up a little bit, not like the whole way into a fist, but just a little bit up, he can do that with his backwards, with his hands backwards, which is something I've never seen before. And so it's here one from 2023, 10th of October. Uh, bottle flipping record breaker. The thing about him is, I was always, he's now, God, he's 59 then. When was this? 2023. So he's 60. So yeah, it, I knew there was, he was a bit older than me. He still looks the same. I don't think he looks any different. I mean, he's got less hair. Haven't we all? You know, it's just, but he's still, I think the thing about him is he's, he married his wife. Well, they were married when I met, met them in 1989. So how long I knew him. And she's a wonderful, but really amazing person. So I think he, he, he hit the jackpot. He can, he's been able to live the life he wants to live, doing what he enjoys doing. And got three great kids, so he's he's held more than sixty world records. I mean, how many people in the world could even say that? I mean, I just said it, but yeah, you know, I mean, like, how have actually accomplished that? So, the first the first world record was to flip a plastic water bottle from a table in the same manner as a beer mat flipping record. He achieved thirty four flips in one minute. In which the bottle turned 180 degrees, <laughs> and that, that that was what he did recently. I don't know how he comes up with some of these things, but what he was well known for, you know, back in the 80s and the 90s, is or the 80s, yeah, it was like beer mat flipping. So what he'd do is he'd balance beer mats on the edge of a table and then just basically flip it like tap the bottom with his fingers and then catch them because he's got such huge hands he yeah he he just he could catch more than anyone else in the world so he held that work I don't know if he's still got the world record but he did he held it. I think he, he, he had someone else that kept beating him and he kept beating them and kind of going backward and forward. And the other thing that he was uh, most well known for at the time, apart from uh, beer mat flipping, was the coin tossing. So he was a tosser of coins. So he, he had the world record for the most amount of coins balanced on his, you know, the back of his elbow and catching them. Again, it's a very hand thing. He, because he's, he's, he calls himself, he call, yeah, he calls himself Dexter Stan, because he literally he could do things with his hands that were pretty impressive. Ask his wife. No, oh, no, I didn't say that. So the first was to flip a plate. Okay, it's weird. It's funny as well. But it's amazing. I mean, why would you come up with something like wake up and think you know what I'm going to do? I need to do a new world record. How about, I wonder what the world record is for reciting the names of the survivors of the Titanic disaster. I mean, how would you even, in the, in the fastest time, <laughs> how would you even come up with that? It's so random. He, he, he just, he's just find things that were just really weird. So he wasn't one of these world record breakers so he's, he's been in the Guinness Book of Records he still is for you know for decades among the most successful record breakers in this country and he started his own world records organization as well I think about 20 years ago I was in it actually didn't know that did you I had the longest hypnosis recording it's a long time ago. But, uh, yeah, at the time I was in his record books. That's about like 2018, possibly. 
So, um, what else is there? So he took 41 minutes and 23 seconds to do that. Wow. I wonder. Record breaker. Oh my goodness. I'm still in there. Right, this is a long time ago, okay? It's a very long time ago, so it wouldn't really count anymore. But I had the longest hypnosis video on the internet. It's 10 hours and 30 minutes. Um, so I'm in there, kind of, this is the Record Holders Republic. So, that's back in the days when I, it's, I don't know if it's even on there anymore, to be fair. But it's a long time ago. <laughs> wow. Record breaker. So, um, that's that was in connection with coins. I don't know how I managed to get onto there from talking about money. So the next one, I'm not going to talk about this because this is obvious. Um... Okay, I'm not even going to read that one out. Uh, Monopoly money worth more. So, and this is obvious as well. It's like, they're saying, do you know what? If a Monopoly money was real, it'd be worth a lot more money. Oh, okay, so you're telling me that you couldn't buy Pall Mall for £500. Is that what you're telling me? Or five thousand pound, you, you really? It'd be more than that in real life, would it? Blimey! Parker Brothers has printed out over thirty billion in monopoly cash, more than most central banks. So, according to this, there's more money. There's more monopoly money in the world than there is real money I don't think that's true I don't think that's true it's got to be more than 30 billion or maybe they're just talking about America but it's still got to be more than 30 billion in cash apparently in Sweden where cash is nearly oblique I mean, obsolete. A man was arrested for throwing coins at a bank in protest. The reason? He was mad his money smelled bad. Smelly Swedish money. So, I mean, it's always, you don't know where money's been, do you? So, I know somewhere where money's been, but just... If, you, if you're handling money, you need to wash your hands pretty regularly. In Sweden, so cash is nearly obsolete. I didn't know that. They're trying to do that here. During lockdown, the second year, like when it was still kind of, we were allowed out, but it was kind of semi, it was still quiet, but we were allowed out. But all the shops still had masks and distancing and stuff. I don't even know why I was in town. I had to go in town probably to get some food order or something. Or maybe to go to the opticians. Who knows? So I had to go in for some reason. And I went to Intercosta Coffee. Either Costa or the other one. Ordered my coffee, and they said it's like three fifty or whatever the amount was. So I handed over my money. They said, "No, nope, not taking cash." I said, "What?" And there was a huge queue behind me. Okay, there was more than three people. I said, "What do you mean you're not taking cash? You're not taking cash? What do you want me to pay in kindness?" I mean, do you want me to do the washing up? What, what, what's going on? It's confusing me. 
it's like, what, is it free? He said, no, but we're not taking cash. I said, that is the currency of this here country. This is how we, you know, cash is how we pay for things. And he said, no, people pay for debit cards and credit cards. I said, yeah, but that's an option. It's easier to keep, ha it's, I find it's easier to keep track of money if I've got it in cash. I can keep more track of what I've spent rather than just keep going, beep, you know, tapping on something with a card. And he said, that's too much information. Uh, so can you not give, can you not pay by card? And I said, I haven't got a card. Because I'd come out without my wallet. It's just a very rare moment. But, or either that, I just didn't have enough money on my card. I, I drew out all my money in cash. And I said, I don't have a card. My card, there's no money on there. Which is not, not something I need. didn't really want to be shouting that out. I said to him, I don't really want to be shouting that out in front of all these people. That I've got no money in the bank. And his response was, well, don't shout out then. They say it normal volume and no one else will hear. Maybe the person next in the queue might hear, but the people outside won't hear. But when you shout it out like that, everyone's heard. Probably people in the next town probably heard. And then we both laughed because obviously they wouldn't. It wasn't that loud. We had a little cuddle. And he, he gave me the coffee for free. And I remember thinking... Well, I tried my luck. I said, can I have a sandwich as well? And a sausage roll. And <laughs> we laughed again. This time he didn't want to cuddle. If only I'd done that. If only I'd got all the food and quickly put my hands all over it and started eating a sausage roll and a cake and just rubbing it over my face or whatever. And then saying, oh, I've only got cash. I might have got away with taking it all and getting it. But no. So I said, okay, so I just take it. So he just ripped it off and gave me a coffee and I walked out. And he spoke to the person next and he said, no, out. I thought he was telling me to get out. And he wasn't. He was telling the next person in line to get out. He said, you get out. You've already been in twice. You know that we're giving away free drinks for people that haven't got um, debit cards. So you can leave. So people were trying their luck a little bit. I genuinely didn't know. Genuinely did not know. And had I done, I would have ordered more. I would have ordered, wow, I'd have ordered everything. But they refused to handle cash. Um, so the hundred thousand pound bill, the U.S. once printed one hundred thousand pound bills, featuring Woodrow Wilson. That was a, it was a singer, wasn't he? These were never in public circulation and were used for transactions between Federal Reserve banks. Ah. Yeah. Do you remember that movie, the one, the one million pound note? And it was based in England. And it was, yeah, no one believed. I think it, he was getting all this stuff, and then they started to misbelieve him or disbelieve that he had, he actually did have a one a million pound note, when actually he did in the end. I think. But it was weird because no one could, no one could like give change, could they? That's the problem. If all you got on you is a million pounds, a million pound note, and you just want to buy a Kit Kat, it's a difficult situation. <laughs> it is a difficult situation. I mean, you can either give, tell them that you'll pay for it later, or them just not give you the Kit Kat. Or you can 
give them the million pound note and let them owe you the change, which is probably not going to happen. But then if they refuse to give you the Kit Kat and they just work there, you could go and buy the shop. Bearing in mind this million pound note was back in the, probably the 1940s or 50s. So you, you could probably get a lot of shop for a million. Buying a shop would probably cost maybe 10, 20 thousand pound back then. So the shopkeeper might not, the, the person working there might not be too happy. So he might just give the Kit Kat away. I don't know. I've never been in that situation. Oh, do you see this? Some people invest in gold. Others invest in goldfish. Huh? Really? A collector once paid $300,000 for a single goldfish. How? Seems a bit fishy to me. Me, 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 me. Really? 300000 Unless it poos gold, why would you? Cheddar money. During World War II, the British made money out of cheesecloth-like material to prevent counterfeiting. Oh, my goodness. So, technically, you could say you had cheddar. For che so, they made money out of... I think I've seen that in the movies where they've got these money just made out of cloth. Wow. I mean, ultimately, it's just the money's not worth anything. I mean, it used to be, didn't it? Like, the coins used to be worth something. Like, you know, um, a coin that was worth $10 was actually literally worth $10 because of the silver or whatever. I'm making it up, but I think it's true. A Canadian man once accidentally received a bank statement showing that he had 92 quadrillion. I don't even know what quadrillion is. Well, I guess it's... It's four times a trillion. So why don't you say four trillion? Quad is four, isn't it? I don't know. It doesn't exist. It, the, the number doesn't, like... There's not a company worth more, m m worth over a trillion. I mean, the, the, it's worth over more than one trillion, but it's, it's never gone beyond a trillion number-wise. Is trillion, is quadrillion above trillion? Because you've got a million. Well, you've got a thousand, hundred thousand, million, billion. So, yeah, thousands. So, like a million, billion, trillion. And I don't know what's after that. Because no one's ever owned, well, no one currently has that amount of money. And no company's worth that amount of money. So I don't know what it's called. NASA only sends paper money on missions. Why? Coins could float around in zero gravity, turning astronauts into unwitting bankers chasing loose change. I don't think so. I don't think that's true. That can't be true. Why would you need money in space anyway? What, in case you come across some alien version of Costa Coffee or something, like McDonald's from Mars. And Mar Why would you need money? I mean, especially if you've got coins, it's only going to weigh you down, which could be handy in space, I suppose. Bananas, okay, in World War II, prisoners of camp, prisoner of war camps, um, 
cigarettes were often used as currency, but in one camp, bananas became the trade standard, making the original fruit market. Oh, God. Let's see if there's any more. Dogecoin. Dogecoin, the cryptocurrency featuring a Shiba Inu dog, was created as a joke in 2013. Despite that, it once had a market cap of over 80 billion. I got no idea what that is. I didn't really understand any of that sentence. Um, money in ancient Rome brides carrying a coin to signify they were bringing home into the bringing home bringing money into the marriage okay it says today many spouses still refer to their partner as the one who spends all my coins. Where? I've never heard that expression before. Uh, the number one... In 2001, Australia tested a $1 million banknote. It wasn't for circulation, but for testing machines. Sadly, it's now considered priceless. And if it was a one-off... I never got that, the word priceless, when I was younger. Most things happened when I was younger. I never quite got the idea of what priceless meant. It's, how can that be, such, how can it even exist? Either something's worth something or it's not worth something. Either it's got a value or you don't. If you don't have a value then it's worthless, not priceless. The idea that something's worth so much that no one can buy it. How can something like that actually exist in reality? Hasn't every painting and every artifact at some point been sold on? You know when they sell it's priceless. The crown jewels are priceless. Not if they were up for sale, they wouldn't be. They they can't be up for sale because they're part of the royal family. But if they were up for sale, they would be. They wouldn't be priceless, would they? You know what I mean? Oh, this is interesting. In two thousand and fifteen, Hasbro released a special Monopoly set with real cash hidden inside twenty thousand five hundred and eighty dollars okay i did not i don't remember hearing about that and um, the phrase a few clans for money has literal roots native americans used to clam shells as currency In the 80s, 1980s, the Mexican peso, peace pe peso began, became so worthless that people used it as wallpaper. Ah. I've heard that in the past where the money goes, it is devalued so much that people are spending thousands if not hundreds of thousands for a loaf of bread and just it's scary man we don't have that here but blimey I hope never hope never happens because I just don't have that much money during hyperinflation in the 1920s Germany in 1920s Germany, it was a sentence. Banknotes were so worthless, people burned them for fuel. Wow. Ah, oh, 
I'll just, I don't know. So if you had a billion Zimbabwean dollars during their hyperinflation, you could buy a banana. Wow. A billion dollars for a banana. Now I'm thinking, unless they come in millions, like a million dollar notes, a billion dollars would be quite a few at that point, you've got to just like, just, it's just, point, it's, there's no point to the money, is there, at that point? At that point, there's no point to the money. Making a penny costs about 2.1 cents, so each one loses money. Now that's ironic, a currency, that's, that. That is interesting, isn't it? We've stopped making pennies now in this country. We don't make pennies, and I'm not sure if they've got rid of two pennies as well. Definitely got one of the one one pennies gone. Which means everything will be now rounded up to the five pence. No. How does that work, though? How does that work? If they're getting rid of the one one pennies, everything has to add up to a round figure, or at least like a like for example, ten pound can't be nine ninety nine because that one penny's gone. It can't be ten ninety nine. Can't be eleven ninety nine. Can't be nine eighty nine. Can't be seven forty nine. So it'll have to be either fifty five, or you know, or it'll be a five or a zero. There's no other. Wow. It says here one hundred a one hundred trillion Zimbabwean. 100 trillion trillion Zimbabwean dollar bill was once worth less than 50 pence or 50 cents. Today collectors pay hundreds of real dollars for them. Blimey. Uh, Microsoft founder Bill Gates could spend one million dollars per day and not even run out of money for 200... <laughs> 245 years. Hmm. That's quite a lot in it. Yes, that's a that's a lifestyle. One million a day. 245 years. Hmm. In the 17th century, pirates preferred Spanish double loons, doubloons, I don't know what that is, and pieces of eight as currency. The term pieces of eight came from chopping coins into small pieces for easier trading. I guess that makes sense. You know, if originally there was just like one coin, let's say a pound coin, The only way you could give someone change is by cutting off a bit of a coin and give it to them, little tiny little bits of metal. Yeah, it does make sense, doesn't it? Because literally the coin was worth its weight in gold. I don't know if it was gold or silver or whatever. Chuck Feeney, co-founder of Duty Free Shoppers, secretly gave away almost his entire 8 billion fortune to charity. He kept just enough for himself to live modestly. Ah. So he secretly did it. How do we know about it then? Duty free shoppers. I don't know what that is. 8 billion. I mean, that's enough to get by, isn't it? 
eight billion. You could probably give half that away and still just about manage. Hmm. You might have to make a few cut <laughs> a few cutbacks, but you'll be fine. In two thousand six, robbers in Malaysia stole an ATM. They got away with the machine but couldn't open it. After hours of frustration, I left it on the side of the road. That's not a happy story. That's theft, man. A bakery in Beverly Hills introduced an ATM that dispenses fresh cupcakes instead of cash. Yeah. I don't think anything can be as good as a cupcake. That's a nice thing to... Oh. Oh, yeah. So I wonder if there's any more. So let's see it there. In the US, the two pound bill featuring Thomas Jefferson is still in circulation but relatively rare. Apparently a lot of people believe it no longer it's no longer produced. Okay. And the origin, okay. The term salary comes from the Latin word salarium, salarium, or salarium, or salarium, which was a payment made to Roman soldiers in salt. Salt was a valuable commodity. So if you did get a time machine, all you'd need was a big bag of salt and you'd be rich, wouldn't you? Just go back in time. What if it's raining though? The salt gets soggy. Ah. The largest coin ever minted was a 100 kilogram gold coin made in Australia in 2011. This massive coin showcases the lengths to, uh, uh, the world's oldest currency, the British pound sterling. Oh, how about this then, ladies and gentlemen? The British pound sterling is the world's oldest currency still in use, dating back to 775 AD. Its longevity reflects the enduring stability of the British economy. We, you could basically say that we invented money. You're welcome. Uh -huh. The worst, the world's first automated teller machine. What's a teller machine? Oh, that that would be like ATM, I guess. The cash machine. The f world's first. I just realised I'm being very slow. ATM stands for automatic automated teller machine. So we don't call them ATMs in this country. We call them cash machines. I say we. Maybe the younger people do, but ATM is it's not an English word. Well, clearly it is because the first one was in London, Enfield, which where I was born. Three years before I was born, it, the first one, the world's first ever, was installed in Enfield in 1967. By and the innovation revolutionised banking, providing 24-7 access to cash. But of course, no one used to say 24-7 back then. 24 hours a day. But that was too hard to say just took too long 24 hours a day 7 days a week it's like it's just a long sentence we can't you know there was I remember everyone got together the whole world got together and thought well, what can we do we need to stop wars we need to do something about that to no that's that's not the most important thing the, the biggest thing is the sentence 24 hours a day 7 days a week it's too long it's too cumbersome. It's too... A bit too much. You know? A bit too much for a tongue twister. A bit, it takes... It, 
people haven't got time in this busy day and age of the, the 90s or the early 2000s. And so I came up with, what about 24-7? I think may, America might have said 7-24 because they, they have their dates back to front. What do you mean we have our dates back to front? You do. What do you mean? Well, what do you say the 1st of April? How do you write it down? You put 4-1. We put 1-4. We invented the dates and the months. <laughs> I don't know. Was it the Romans? Who invented who invented months? Months and days. I think it was the Romans. I might be wrong. Why 12 months a year? How it works? I don't know. Who invented... Okay, we have the ancient Babylonians, Babylonians, to thank for our 24-hour days. Okay. So the number seven held a particular... As soon as we have the birth, thank you for them. The number seven, so seven days a week... Again, them again. I don't know. But yeah, it's kind of strange. I understand why they do it in America and whatever countries that do the the month first and then day and then year. Because on a spreadsheet, it works better that way. However, as far as the communication aspects go, it doesn't so much. I mean, it took me years to realise, like, why, 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 you know, I used to like, why is America, why is their 5th of November, or why do they, celeb why do they celebrate the 7th of July? Seventh of June, seventh. Of June. That's why they. That's why seventh of July, because it's seventh for the seventh. So Independence Day is the seventh for the seventh, because they know they want. Ah, like, oh, now I understand. It's a conspiracy. What are you actually talking about? <laughs> I don't know. But you know, if you go for Christmas. For Christmas, for us, it's 25th of the 12th, not 12th of the 25th. It's not 12.25, it's 25.12. Do you see what I mean? So that's, that always made sense, but then it's just what I've, it's what I've used to. Doesn't really matter. I mean, what, what benefit would, you know, everyone doing the same thing do other than help communication possibly make the world a better place but other than that how's it going to do that if we have a I don't know I'm just making it up to go along the first paper money originated in China during the Tang Dynasty 1618 to 907 how do we know name one person that was there come on pushing forward Tell me. Tell me to my face that that's what happened because you were there and you saw it. No, you don't know. Thank you very much. Merchants used promissory notes as a... I don't know what that means. And I'm not going to look it up. The word money is derived from the Latin word monita. Monita, which was a title given to Juno, the Roman goddess of marriage and queen of the gods. Temples dedicated to her often served as mints where coins were produced, leading to the association between the goddess and currency. By the way, some of this might be lies. The first universal credit card 
which could be used at a variety of establishments was introduced by Diners Club in 1950. American Express debuted a credit card of this type in 1958. The first universe price was to buy a diners club. So let's have a look. So let's find who. I want to see who created diners club. History and legacy diners club international. It's a New York restaurant. Okay, cool. I thought it was. Well, it might be. The first online purchase was made in 1994 when a man purchased a CD by a band by the band Sting from the website Netmarket I didn't know there was a band called Sting I know a singer called Sting I remember a band called Police the Police is there a band called Sting in 1994? And it marked the beginning of e commerce as we know it. Band Sting. So I'm wondering if that's just, if they've got that wrong and they meant Sting, musician. Yeah, the play. There's no band called Sting. I'm not saying there isn't a band called Sting. Okay, there is a band called Sting. Sting. Oh no, it's Sting. It's actually Sting. <laughs> right, so is f where is Sting? Nope. Is Sting. So they must be referring to Sting. Sting Sting. I'm an alien in New York. Oh. Um, I'm tired. I don't want to. I can't keep doing it anymore. I'm fed it. I've had enough of this tantric stuff. I just need to go to sleep. Oh no, leave me alone. I'm 90. I don't want to do it anymore. Stacy, leave me alone. Um, I've had a few people view my video from yesterday Monday's Boring Objects so this is the end of the recording really it's been a bit of a waffle a waffle fest to be fair I had some sausages earlier <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you that it's just because it's a truth and it's exciting but it's time to go Ah, it's time to go to bed. So I'm going to get ready for bed, take the little one in the garden to do his last wee of the day, and then retire. Retire into bed. That's what I'm going to do. Because it's three minutes to ten o'clock. So it's going to be probably 20 past, half past before I make it into the bed. And then what I'll do is probably listen to an audio book. Yeah. What book am I listening to at the moment? Let's have a look. I'm an Englishman in New York. Oh, I thought it was alien in New York. It's an Englishman. What book am I reading? Or what book am I listening to? Okay. Understanding Child Development. So that's my latest book that I'm listening to. And... Oh... Huh. Ten. I was listening to it earliest, but I must have three, ten, thirty, one, 
That's four hours, two minutes left, but minus oh four. Uh, yeah, I think I must have listened to about an hour earlier. It's only just over five hours, I think, for that that particular book. Oh dear! Previous books for this week. I was listening to Tours of Titans by Tim Ferriss. Um, this is quite a, an interesting book, Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig. So I listened to that as well the other day. I got Mastering College Essays. I listened to that, but that in the hope that that would help me get motivated for my my uh, assignment. But uh, oh dear, the psychology book, Introduction to Psychology, Essentials of Social, social Psychology. It's kind of weird. I've got. Um, What's my profile? I've got 363 books in my Audible account. And I've been a member since 2017. It's saying here 2024, but the fact is it's been since 2017. And my listening time... Monthly... So far this month, November, it's now the 26th, 157 hours, 51 minutes of listening to audiobooks. Uh, the, only, the only month I've beaten that, so I've only got one, two, three, four, the last five months. In July, I had 172 hours and 21 minutes listening to audiobooks. August, 89 hours. September, 100 hours. October 74 and a half hours now November 157 nearly 158 hours which comes to a complete 2 months 25 days 23 hours and 11 months quite a lot quite a lot of listening time today I've already listened to 4 hours and 14 minutes no Daily, day. Oh, okay. No, today I listened to four hours, four hours and fourteen minutes. Daily. Today I've listened to four hours and fifteen. Yesterday I listened to four hours and eighteen minutes. Sunday. Because it's Monday yesterday. Today, Sunday I listened to seven hours and twenty minutes. Saturday I listened to two hours and thirty-six minutes. And Friday, I listened to four hours and 26 minutes. So, apart from the really big... Oh, yeah, Sunday was a big day. Saturday was a smaller day. So, we're looking at four, four plus hours a day. I mean, some books do have a lot more hours than others. I mean, I guess that's obvious, isn't it? But some of the books I've got are 20 hours or, you know, they're, they're not usually like huge amounts. But the average is normally, I don't know, seven, like the, the shortest books is about five hours. And then an average size book would possibly be between 7 and 10 hours and then a, a bigger book so for example yeah, where is it I'm just going down so okay so it's, it's not that many that are really so you've got understanding the brain 16 hours Um, 
Hegel, Marx and Vysotsky, 17 hours. Theories of, the, of Human Development, 15 hours. So some of them, um, the great ideas of psychology, 21, over 21 hours. So yeah, some of those ones are very long. But generally, I'd say roughly between six and eight hours, I'd say, pretty much would be the average. Because there's uh, sociology for dummies, nine hours, five minutes, uh, 52 minutes, but I think that's how much is left out of about 15 hours. Evolve Your Brain by Joe Dispenza, 16 hours. Why is that locked? Title no longer included with membership. You. Why'd you do that? Psychology Classics. So all these ones that are no longer in included with the membership. So why? 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 Blimey. So they're making ones that are, were free to listen to and now they're no longer free. So I have to pay for them. That's not fair. There's what money man. I ain't got no money man. Oh. So some of those books I had listed weren't all my books that I've that I own. There's a few that are just part of the Audible catalogue. It includes, so I'll get rid of that. What's this one? Right. Yeah, I've got a couple here. That's weird. So there's a few that have been, so Evolve Your Brain, that's been taken off. 50 Psychology Classics, that's been taken off. The looser effect that's been taken off the brain. So these are the ones that I've read, but that's besides the point. I want them to keep on there. Free yourself from fears, bipolar disorder that's gone. Ivan Pavlov. The little book of attachment that's gone. Psychology of dummies that's gone. Evolve your brain that's gone. The brave athlete that's gone. How strange! That's really weird. So these, these books are no longer involved, um, available in my membership. I thought I purchased them. That's very unusual. I just don't keep track of things, that's the problem. I really don't. So what these things that are just that's, that's really weird. Very weird. I'm going through them and deleting them, but they just they keep going back being on there again. I think there's an issue. And I I thought I'd have used the credits for those. And I've no, I'm not. I've been more confused than this before. But I thought, as I'm sort of a regular customer, then I would still have access to those. But nope. No, 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 no. Oh. So what I do? It keeps saying title no longer included in the membership. All right. I'm going to come out of there and then maybe go back in again and see if it updates it because this is just silly. T 
Titan Library is locked. Your membership has ended. My membership hasn't ended. What are you talking about? My membership has not ended. Has it? Membership. My, ended, my membership hasn't ended. My, my, my membership is completely up to date. Why are they saying that? Why do they say stuff like that? It literally took money out yesterday. Thanks for being a listener since 30th of August 2017. Your next bill is 23rd of the 12th. So that's 23-12. Not 12-23. 23-12-2024. why is it saying on here that my thing has ended? Because it hasn't. Title in library is locked. Remove from library. Remove from library. Remove from library. So I'm going to remove these from the library because I don't need them in there. If I can't, if I can't read them or listen to them, what's the point in them being in my library? Zero point. I'm sure you agree. Remove from library. Remove from library. That's a shame. I mean, I've still got 347 titles. It's just I don't understand why they were... I don't understand it. Very weird. What's that all about? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone for anyone? It's a very strange thing. I mean, part of the good thing of these... Uh, audible is you can listen to other books that isn't part of your life you know that you can listen to for free without having to spend the credits on them perhaps I've upset them I don't know how I don't get it I don't I, I, I don't get it at all Very strange. Has anyone noticed that Facebook has turned into lots of videos of TV shows and old stuff from the past and just I don't know. Da 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 Anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. I think I need to fart. Don't tell anyone. No. I think that's a... I think that that's... That needs a safety. It needs a silencer on. Uh, Take care. Bye. Relax. In a more deep 
and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find. Like some people do. And myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording. That really. Resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from... We're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualisation. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was the person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful, and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button, in fact it might have even been a tape, tape recorder, I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words, because I had them memorized, really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down
Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if if not more so, each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice it almost feels like a very light breeze, even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it comes 
comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed. You feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional Muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. Without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice the ease in which You breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever 
whenever I imagine my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed. tend to visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just take in some time. Away. From everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has 
has slowed down. Slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs The feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body, further and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the 
the feelings in your wrists. muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, the mind becomes even slower. slow your stomach Peaceful in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel.
your spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Mind just wandering away happy. 
happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more. Enjoy the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body, just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
not have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace. Total peace. Go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up. And your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling, positive healing. An energy that spreads through your body like a wave of color. 
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it, it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment, this is the world. I live in the countryside, so there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth. Relaxing, calm and loose as you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm. Focus in. the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck, relaxed and loose. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And that feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing and you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing 
message. Into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
fingertips. attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, Muscles in your thighs, your knees so relaxed. Muscles and your shins completely
start counting down now from 20 down to 1 you can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps and each step all 20 steps and each step represents a level of comfort Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
obtain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find do is just drift off to sleep, and if that's what you want, then just allow yourself to do that, now focus in on your eyes, going to begin counting down from ten down to one, right now, ten,
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, and you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. 
and as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Now. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice that that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may seem to sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally, if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, we can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
in the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. It's had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. I was okay. If I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy. Because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massage in the bones of your leg, massage in all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet also go whew, my toes clap I'm so happy your legs really and I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, a very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. to one and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed ten nine eight seven So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer, not just in your body, but also relaxing your mind. And just notice how you feel. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to say. There's nothing to think about. Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music of course you're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people of course you might be but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own so no distractions And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises, a sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical. This is just a natural process. Something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost, you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep. Depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy process of gradually relaxing each
each muscle in your body. and just observing the sensation of letting go completely This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. slow and peaceful six slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may note 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. in with number seven.
Noting now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands, your fingers. There's nothing needed to be done. There's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing on your Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Tension. 
generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if we've gone inside yourself and we've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to Please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways, more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And it's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life it's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past 
for some reason no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seemed to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you you're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day including of course your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep even when we're kids sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to Sean telling us stay awake maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to we don't want to go to sleep the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy.
permission to let go because that's all it is it's just deciding When you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect positive, only a positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends those changes within you Continue to flourish and grow. Transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity because from now on your mind rejects negativity from now on you're going to start noticing when negativity arises You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. So 
to and that negativity would disappear. as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. nice, doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. can continue to relax, and if you choose, you can drift to sleep, with every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Eight. 
fourteen. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel 
more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. feeling of comfort and relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start to drift That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also by 
pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission to my body and my mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and drift off to sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on a different part of your body, and you find yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep. And that's the last you remember 
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they may seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if. Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your ankles.
entire body feels. Noticing how your mind feels now. Letting go. go of everything letting go go of everything everything I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, and you feel comfortable, and the breathing is really easy, and you feel, you feel confident in how you look as well, so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down to the back of your neck. You can feel my hands just 
gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the, the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow our knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And 
and maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch but very gently and you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders the sides and the back This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. down your arms you do one arm at a time starting with your right arm and what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you that way it'll still be attached and I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger. 
someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and you do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where there would be a beam, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again very gentle, yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can do that a few times, 
sometimes pink and juice the knuckle or the you know the two fingers and just go either side of the spine almost just push down go all the way down to the bottom of the spine but each time releasing tension and opening up the body stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated and now I'm going to move to one side to your right side from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis and you're going to massage that area of your back I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side to the middle in fact to where your spine is massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing it's almost like kneading bread there's that big area which is firm yeah lots there to massage potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged it releases so much from your body that's not useful starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of really massage deeply if that's your choice and then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is pressing and kneading firm and gentle at the same time it feels so releasing this mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now I'm going to move, or we'll move further up to your top of your body, and I'm going to do the same. This time, starting with your upper back, put my hands 
forward over and mess it massage in that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area of muscle tissue uh, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from the chest it's all connected the chest and the back connect together really be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine and then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing as gentle or as deep as you choose now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower your middle of your back Go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands, Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. In the back of your back of your ankles. Just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet gently but 
firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I'd spend more time in one particular area. As you move down. muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience for having your feet massaged, feel really Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up, I can clean my hands, make them all fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone, and you're just massaging the whole of the chest. chest around, and it gives us quite a large area that can move from one side to the next, moving my hands from underneath pretty much where your arms are. Stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, to feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, and just below your arms all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button round 
to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button, and then going the other way around, there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. So now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them. I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. down to your knees, gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly but firmly, moving down to your ankles, Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot and with each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy. and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoy feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. You 
going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. to one. And each time I say a number, you can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow. just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one yourself feeling more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds where you are, you'd be aware of those sounds at the moment, and you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's a forest a pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes and there's the odd plane that goes by seems important whatsoever the more candles you blow out the less 
that's important anything is the more handles you go out the further you seem to move away from the sound say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple going to start by introducing the first candle which is a hundred the first candle which is Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting.
aussi.
ты.
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. it's a nice feeling it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say-so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax. body just follows. It's all that, like a breath of relief. Oh, okay. Now that can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and that, oh, feels so nice knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two and it feels blissful and just by sitting down like that your body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind will prepare to let go of everything and to just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate, any tensions, 
darkness can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and that seeming of failure. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you choose to wind it up. All the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and then it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we're not we may not actually be aware of what we need, maybe physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries. feels so nice 
breathing out any excess within your attention and stress in every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things have come to a standstill and maybe just much, much slower than before. Because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice. Which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know you are feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed. It really is benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your hair feels this healing relaxation and as you focus from the inside of your scalp where your brain is you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain to the rest of your body and your mind to relax even more deeply relax even more completely go of any remaining thoughts or concerns allowing them to drop onto the floor because they're no longer necessary in this moment in this moment of deep relaxation
this ever increasing sensation of warmth, comfort, that is spreading throughout your body. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, 
to do its finish. With how you actually feel in this moment. So you may start off focusing on your hands, just be aware of your hands, I'd like you to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, open and closing your hands very gently, just so that you Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, and making your turns gently. feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them, maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs. Just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation. of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now, moving your focus Noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, and as you reach your shoulders, and as you focus slowly on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards if you're looking up, maybe moving your head down 
Christ in the name of the Father and the Science of the Father. Thank you very much, Lord. Very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lord. You are so moving down to your deep area and open to your presence. Thank you. 
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretched a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day to day life it's a slower movement of energy make up the larger movements, which is always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way or I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you the feelings in your arms instead of feeling the whole of the arm maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins, The 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearms and your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just feeling like it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing Sitting on. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, like you tense the muscles gently. in the difference in each shoulder your lower back side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently. Just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along and it feels in your chest just noticing what sensations you Experiencing in your chest right now. And the 
so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. And of course if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not act different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side and underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is chest. Do I notice that I focus on my chest? I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because when I'm breathing, in, then it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels, it feels okay. little bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas back. Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, you will do tense and muscle relaxes way more than it would normally. And you have to feel that you're able to do that. And you 
from doing it is to um, ensure you prepare part of your body you need to be gentle with yourself at all times when you are with some people or some communities to be kind to yourself your mind how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording Peaceful is your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. You're just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slow down. So your body body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to as if you're moving further away from the body and your mind, just leaving them there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, and get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship.
physical sensation. Most like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and all your normal feelings that you don't want. Sucking it out through your skull. full of fresh air, a place where you can stretch, it's almost as if as you go down you bore and through your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility beyond. sensation that you have to keep, a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. This is something that you can do yourself in your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just count.
sin and physical sin. Heaven says there is a penalty for them. focus on the fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is not the right standard to sit on your couch and have any head sitting or have any feeling in your feet. So now I'm going to count from 20 down to 1 again, this time stress and anxiety that you might have. Breathing, releasing, just breathing through yourself. It's almost as if it's just releasing the whole response from the navel to just the body. the glistening of the different hairs on your legs as gently from 20 down to 1 and 20 19 18 just do a little scan of your body noticing your body fat noticing your upper body any shapes and scars that you might see around your feet just noticing sense of tiredness 
Welcome to my cup. You are mine. Then it goes on. I want to explore the cup. What it feels like when you feel it. The sound. As it goes on. I'm not forcing myself, but giving myself it is a command though, isn't it? Am I telling you that? Or not? I'm just going for a bit of fun here. But I only need to know how the cup feels like that. I don't want to sell myself something that relaxes. Test it out. Just have a little test. Do a little test to see how you are. When you come back more of a more fluent and full, I just said full, I said it wrong. Um, more of a satisfaction in yourself, in your body, in your mind. How quickly. start by just we're focusing on here. There's no point here, so just tell your hand to relax. You say relax as you focus on your breath. Imagining that your hands are the floor that you're walking on, so you've got those gears. So talking to your hand, you're just saying, relax. on your eyes. So tell your eyes to relax. So just saying the same word, relax. Now find the right tone for that word. So now I might say relax. So you, you might say
start focusing on it and expansion and then okay I've got to work I've got to get better you know I've got to get a better degree of confidence in growing in my life and then this came so I did get that awareness and started to be more aware of the tension that was in my brain that I wasn't I wasn't focused on Okay. 